key, and that'll make it work much smoother. Now let's go in the field with Kurt and get some practical knowledge about handling cattle when we're on foot. Let's have a look. So the very basics of cattle handling are understanding flight zones and balance point. When we talk about flight zone, that's the distance that causes an animal to flee. But what we want to do is create a movement at the right angle with the right amount of intensity, intensity to get that animal to move off smoothly. The balance point is where you place yourself on the side of the animal to get them to move forward or slow down or stop or turn away. So when we're talking about what to use to get into those zones, a four-wheeler, a horse, or a foot, there are different ideas, different thoughts that should apply. On foot is probably the easiest and the best, but not always the most appropriate for the situation. When we talk about a four-wheeler, it has real easy capability to go forward, fast, slow, or medium, and stop and back up, but you can't take it sideways. Some horses are real good to go fast forward and you can't stop them or whatever. So however well your horse is trained, you can get that to whatever level you'd like to take it. The more experience you have as a stockman, you learn to read the animals and immediately change to what they will work best at. They will tell you by their reaction to you how to change to fit what they need. Then you can increase your angles, sharpen your angles, slow your speed down or speed it up. Once we get cattle trusting us, it's real important not to make loud noises, fast moves or whatever to disrupt or to break that trust. Well, we got the cattle in the corral and they came in good and in a calm state of mind. Now we've transferred from horseback to a foot and so we've got to think of those main things again, safety for the humans and the cattle. We have to keep the animals calm in a thinking, workable manner that uh, doesn't increase their stress as they get closer to the chute or the truck or whatever. Well, a real basic principle here, and that's something a lot of people don't realize, is before you sort the cattle, it's getting the cattle ready for sorting. That's a really, really important concept. It's real important for a cow, an animal, that they learn that when they go through a gate, they're not afraid to go through the gate. They go through the gate and they get freedom and the pressure comes away. This causes cattle to want to work for you. When you force cattle into places where they have to go into more pressure, then you have to fight with the cattle, so to say, to get them to do it. We're trying to change this around to where we teach the cattle how to work for us rather than against us. In other words, when they go through the gate, it's a good thing. The pressure gets uh, taken off. Now, some things we need to think about are when we're working with these cattle, they're gonna be worked on the left side of their body and the right side of their body. So they need to get used to seeing me from their right eye and their left eye. The other thing, when we're talking about balance point, if I have to get way down behind these cattle to get them to move, get way towards their tail, that puts me out of position to control their movement. So the first thing I'll try to teach these cattle is, is to walk away from me, nice and smooth. So I'll just get them to try to come out of this corner and I'll just, I'll, I'll line them up here and I'll, I'll just keep working my way into this corner and Pretty soon I'll be far enough down it'll draw their eye to the right and these cattle will uh, they'll step off and they'll see that gate. Right now they're just bunched up in the corner so I have to get down. I'm not behind them, I'm beside them because I'm wanting them to go out that gate to my right. There, now I'm in a position where I can, I can actually send this heifer and now I can step here and send another heifer and I'll just try to get them where they understand where I'm at. Good. Now I can send my heifers. I can just step, now I'll step forward just a little ways and start controlling their flow. The farther I get forward, the more control I have of the way they go by me. And they're learning to walk by me on their right side. I'll just walk up with them. And they learn by going by me, they get to go to freedom. You'll see they feel kind of good getting by me. Every time you change corrals, put them in an alley, Make sure you're thinking about these things. You're training the animals for the next step. You're not just simply taking them through a gate. You're training them for the next part of what you're going to do. And that'll really help you getting cattle ready for these things. Now I'll go ahead and uh, I'll take them up and put them in the alley. Uh, today, um, Kurt's gonna demonstrate sorting in the alley. This is an area where many people get hurt. So it's really important 
learn how to handle cattle correctly. The first step is no yelling and screaming. Got to get rid of all the rough stuff. And if you bring the cattle in from pasture and they get a little bit excited, you need to let them settle down in the corrals for 20 or 30 minutes. This is where the principles of stockmanship really apply. We're working in an alley. If the cattle can't take me, if their flight zone is real big, it gets real dangerous in the alley and cattle start to panic themselves by jumping on top of each other and stepping on each other. Then they, then they quit thinking and they start reacting. The other thing is the alley can be the most stressful place on cattle there is because they cannot get away from the pressure of their other, other animals stepping on them or squeezing them and they go into a panic mode real bad. The other thing I'd like to say is the width of the alley. This, I could work horseback, if I had a horse that I could handle properly, which my horse I've been riding, he would work just fine in this alley. It's a 14 foot alley. Cattle can feel real comfortable coming by a horse on 14 foot. Sometimes if you have cattle panicked and wild, you can't stop them in a 14 foot alley when you're on foot and that's when it gets dangerous or the cattle learn that they can get by you. So a lot of times if you're working on foot, a 12 foot alley is the best, but if you have a 14, your cattle have to be very calm. An eight or a 10 foot alley, sometimes cattle don't want to come by you and you have to get so deep in them to get them by you, then they start panicking and running by you. So these are just some things that you keep in mind as we are working with these cattle. This will be a nice demonstration of not having much movement. I got them up right here. So I'll have to do quite a bit here and I'll go ahead and touch my bowl. This is a place where I start getting my hands on these animals. I'll make sure their foot's heavy before I put my hand on them so I don't get kicked, but I'll just, I don't have any movement going here, so I might use a little bit of noise to step my movement up. But that's all right. If, if it takes me quite a bit to get them to move up there, they won't be wild and crazy when I get them up there in the corner and they can think their way out of this deal. And this is about the only noise I will use is the I call that the rattlesnake noise, and these cattle are in rattlesnake country, so they ought to be used to that. And I'll let these cattle, by touching them and, and turning my hip away from them, it kind of helps them to move up, and this actually prepares them for the shoot once they get there. And I'll, I'll have to really, I'm gonna have to really step up my pressure by going back and forth here to get these guys to move up into the pressure here. And by putting my hand on these cattle, I'm preparing them for when they get in the chute. But I don't touch them unless I know they're not going to kick me, or I'm pretty sure of it. So I'll send them on up. And of course, I'll have to uh, really put a lot of pressure trying to get them to go right up against the, all the activity up in the front. So it should be easy to get them to come back by me. Now I'm going to go ahead and get my gate. And I like to sort cattle. I like to. Uh, sort cattle by myself if I'm just sorting them two ways. So right here I can use those same concepts and I'll, I'll, I'll go ahead and let some of them spill by me as I'm coming up and I'll send these cattle right on up. Now I'm kind of close to my gate, but I'll, I'll just keep working here. Now I got to back up, back up. If I just stop straight, I'll let this heifer come and I'm going to send her right on around me and send her on back. Drive her on back, step it up in front of my bull. I'll step back, step back, stop her, send her back up. Now I got a few that can flow on by me. Now I don't want to get too much movement too fast, so I just step back, hook these cattle on, stop them, step in, turn them back. The thing we have to really be aware of when we're sorting cattle in this way is the ability to step back and give them time to go. So right here, I'll walk backwards, backwards, stop her, turn her and send her across. Send her to the back, I'll draw, step forward to send them by, step back, stop her, put my hands up, stop her, stop her. Now I should be able to step forward, send her right back to the back, let this one come by me. I got another green tag coming, I'll stop her, turn her, walk her back, bye. Now right here, 
a couple of moves with my feet should send this girl back. It didn't. I'll send these two right on across. Get here. Now, if I get too far in, I'll get down behind my cattle and I'll have to panic them to stop them. I missed one cow already, I can see. I'll let the bull come on by. I'll step back. When I finish up, I want these cattle to be calm. I'd like her to look at me and have me on their mind when I finish things up. Now, if you'd like to learn more about low stress cattle handling and the Beef Quality Assurance Program, just go to the website, bqa.org.